What's up? What's up, YouTube? What's going on? Andy Kruger here. Today's video explaining your dog's behavior. I believe there are two things that determine every single one of your dog's behaviors. The first thing you guys are going to go, yeah, duh, Andy, we know that. The second thing you guys might go, huh, wait a minute now. Two things that determine your dog's behavior. Number one, every single experience and interaction that they've had up until that point. Makes sense, right? That's the obvious one. Number two, what your dog is doing when they're not training. Let that one sit for a minute. What your dog's doing when they are not training. So let's say you train a lot. Let's say you train an hour a day. That's a good amount. Let's say you're crazy. You train two hours a day. That's a boatload of training. Still leaves 22 hours. Still leaves 23 hours. What determines your dog's behavior is what they are doing when they're not training. Because guess what? That's going to be most of the time. Most of the time, they're not actually going to be training. So let's take a second to break that down. Thank you all for being here. YouTube Live, we're going to let some questions come through. Once I finish this little segment, I'll get to answering some questions. Every interaction and experience your dog has had. That's what determines how they think and how they behave. So let's say you take your dog out for a walk. Your dog's very distracted. Your dog doesn't want to engage. Maybe your dog is reactive when they see other dogs or other people. Why do they do this? Why is my dog reactive? Why is my dog disengaged? It's because every interaction and experience they've had leading up to that point and everything that they do when they're not training. So for example, you get a puppy, take him or her for a walk around the neighborhood every day, maybe twice a day. It's a little eight week old puppy. You see a neighbor, and your neighbor goes, oh my God, what a cute puppy. I love puppies. Can I pet the puppy? And you go, yeah. And they start petting your puppy. Maybe neighbor down the street, they're walking their dog. They go, oh, you got a new puppy. My dog loves puppies. Let's let our dogs meet. And the dogs meet and they da, 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 da. That's important. That's it. Right then in the moment, it's all fun and games. Oh, okay, say hi. Okay, bye-bye. That right there is going to heavily impact how your dog feels and behaves on walks going forward. So now your dog is reactive when they see another dog. Maybe your dog is silent reactive. Huh? Where your dog sees a dog and they just go, oh, oh, oh. Hey, buddy, I'm over here. I'm over. No, 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 no. Oh, dog, dog. And then the owner goes, oh, he's so distracted by dogs. But why? Why is he that distracted and reactive to a dog? It's because every experience that that puppy or dog has had leading up to that point, they've been able to approach other dogs, other people. They've been able to touch, to interact, to jump to bite, to wrestle, to play, to pull. They've been allowed to do all that. Now, one day you wake up and you go, no, 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 we're not doing any of that anymore. Dog goes, what are you talking about? That creates conflict. That creates frustration. That creates anxiety. That creates stress. That's why your dog is reactive. The dog isn't born reactive. It's every experience and interaction they have from the day you get them that builds up 
to produce that behavior. Now let's take the big one here. What your dog is doing when you're not training. This blows people's minds sometimes. I call this the dog's lifestyle. I'll answer most questions with, hey, how do I stop my dog from this? How do I stop my dog from that? Your dog needs a drastic lifestyle change. And people go, lifestyle, like what, do you, what are you talking about, lifestyle? Lifestyle is everything that the dog does when they are not training. I will give you an example. I was training this morning. I was training my boy, Freddy, two-year-old Belgian Malinois, birthday two days ago. What's up? Happy birthday, Fred. We were out there training. My decoy came into town. We trained a lot. It wasn't even an hour, though. We did all French ring. We did his jumps, agility training. We did some obedience. We did sendaways. We did change of positions with the decoy around. We did bark and hold in the blind a bunch. We did um, a couple other bite work exercises. We did um, a bunch of object guard. And by the end of this, Freddie was toast. He was gassed. He was happy. He had had a really nice workout, but it wasn't even an hour. It might have been 40 minutes tops. It was a lot. Guess what, though? I, put, I cooled him down. I put him away. He's done training today. He's done. I'm not pulling him out later and doing a bunch of stuff. That was his training for the day. It was super good, super productive. We knocked out the training. Now it's done. That was 40 minutes out of 24 hours. So what is my dog going to be doing for the 23 hours and 20 minutes that remain in the day? That, my friends, is going to be a major part of your dog's overall disposition. So the average person, we put on our treat pouch, we load it up with kibble, you follow my videos to a T, hopefully. You train your dog, you spend five minutes, you spend 30 minutes. Let's say it's crazy, you spend two hours training the dog and you do a great job. You're loading the reward markers, you're luring, you're proofing, negative reinforcement, maybe some tug play, boom, you knock out some tremendous training with that dog. Okay, that's one piece of the pie, but now what's the dog going to do for the other 23 hours during the day? Hint, spoiler alert, if it's off-leash free roam around the house, <laughs> That's me melting. I just melted. Off-leash free roaming around the house most of the time is going to majorly contribute to your dog's overall behavior. It's no good. For a young dog, or any dog, especially a young one, but for a young dog who is actively in training, off-leash free roam around the house is no good, and I'm going to tell you why. Because off-leash free roam around the house is you directly telling your dog, do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. That's what off-leash free roam is. Whether you know it or not, when you take the leash off the dog and release them into your home, to do as they please, you are telling the dog or puppy, go do whatever you want in the house. And as I said before, even if you train two hours a day, which is a lot, even if you train a lot every day, there's 22 hours left. 22 hours versus two hours. The point being, most of the time, your dog's doing whatever they want. And what dogs do most of the time is what they revert to. 
in times of excitement, times of stress, that's what they revert to. So you could train your dog until you're blue in the face. You could follow all my videos to a T, but if the lifestyle isn't right, your dog isn't going to be right. You could master all the exercises you see in both my YouTube and my Patreon videos, but outside of those sessions, if your dog is off-leash free roaming around the house, it's not going to do you the good that it could do you. So you could do all the training and still have a reactive dog. Why? Because you tell them that most of the time you can do whatever you want. And that's what the dog's accustomed to. So when they're out on a walk and they see the dog, they go, I want to bark. I want to focus on the dog. That's what I want to do. And you go, well, no, no, don't do that. And the dog says, but most of the time I'm allowed to do whatever I want. No off-leash free roam around the house for the dog. When that dog is out of the crate, you are directly interacting with them. You have a game plan and a contingency plan for everything you're going to do with that dog. When they're not doing that, they're out in the yard pottying or stretching their legs. When they're not doing that, they're in their crate or they're on their place command. Work the dog. Interact with the dog. If you're not supremely happy with your dog's training and their behavior, why are you going to let them do whatever they want most of the time? Two things that make up all your dog's behaviors, every experience they have and everything they do when they are not training. Boom! Thanks for hearing me out on that, y'all. So now the way these work, I'm going to get into all the questions that have been coming in. So if you just wanted to hear that and want to jump off, thanks for listening. If you want to stick around and hear me go through some of these questions, sometimes it can get entertaining, feel free to do that. If you guys haven't already, give your boy a subscribe. Come on. Let's get those subs up. Subscribe to the channel. Of course, it costs you nothing. Hit that notification bell next to the subscribe. That means whenever I release a new video every single Monday or when I'm going live, you'll get a little alert on your phone so you don't miss out on it. So I'd ask that you do that. Help your boy out. Of course, you can hit the Patreon, patreon.com slash Andy Kruger. Let's get into the comments here. Let's go. Sheesh. Let's go. You should make a silent stay video, okay? Today I take my Roddy to the vet. He was very excited and very distracted and he wants to play with the people and the dogs there. You describe my dog in a few words. Yeah, guys, when you have a, a dog that is well-trained, that's a neutral dog. Neutrality isn't natural to the dog. It's a trained mindset. Zero training on any random dog, you put them in close quarters with another dog, where's all their focus going to go? To the other dog, that's what's natural to the dog. But we need to train neutrality. We need to train that me, the owner and handler, is not only the most valuable thing to the dog, it's the only valuable thing to the dog. All good things come through me. Therefore, you put your focus on me. Very typical, though. You, you take your Rottweiler or any breed to the vet. They're going to be very distracted. They're going to be stressed. They're going to be excited. Um, so a tough area to, for the dog to be neutral, but that'll really keep you honest and let you know where your training's at. After that vet visit, you probably have deduced we really need to make some progress on the neutrality in the next vet visit. I want to see him like at least 50% better. Engagement, engagement, engagement. I know I say that all the time, but it's true. How do you introduce dogs to your dog? I don't. I don't introduce dogs to my dog. My dog stares for a bit, but before... He only had an encounter with his brother. What should they be doing? Well, I described what the dog should be doing day to day. 
directly interacting with you or in their crate or outside running around if you have a fenced in yard. Um, my dog stares for a bit, but before he only had encounter with his brother. Guys, here's the thing about every experience and interaction that your dog has. It only takes one single time. It doesn't have to be a lot. It only takes once. Here's what I mean. You get a dog, new dog, you throw a leash on them, you take them for a walk around the neighborhood. Your neighbor's walking towards you with their dog. And before you know it, oh, the dogs are making contact. The dogs are meeting. Say that lasts for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, two minutes, five minutes, doesn't matter. If you never ever let him meet a dog on a walk ever again after that, it doesn't matter because you have already done it. It takes one single time to alter the dog's mindset potentially forever or at least until we can get in there and influence them in a different way. All it takes is one single time. So if you're thinking, well, it's only once or twice or here and there, it's not like he meets dogs on walks every day. All it takes is one time, guys. I'm telling you what, I've had dogs and I've seen dogs where they were pretty social and they got attacked by a dog one time for like five to 10 seconds, one time. That one experience influenced their mindset until they crossed the bridge in the sky and, and left us. Their whole life, all it takes is once. Let's see what we got here. Happy birthday, Fred. Thank you. He got a nice, nice bit of raw on his birthday. He, he liked it. He was a happy boy. Is he just in his crate? My dog's in his crate when I am not directly interacting with him or when he's not outside in my secure yard. Yes, absolutely. How about the yard? The yard is a crucial piece of dog training and I know a lot of people do not have a private fenced yard. You can still do your training, but you are at a massive disadvantage. If you're in an apartment and you have to take that dog out on leash and walk it every time, you are at a big disadvantage. It's doable. Trust me, I did it back in the day, but you're at a big disadvantage there. I love putting my dog in the yard, closing the door, going inside for an hour or two, coming back out, getting him and putting him in his crate. It's, it's one of his favorite things. I'm setting up my crate right now. Nice. What are they going to do in a crate for 22 hours? Well, you misunderstood me there. That's for sure. If you aren't interacting with your dog, if you aren't letting your dog free outside, they're going to be in their crate. Now, I said I was done training Fred for the day, but that sure as heck does not mean I'm done interacting with him. It doesn't mean that his freedom for the day is gone. It means actual training time is finished. So what am I going to do with the dog for the other 22 hours? Every couple hours, I'm going to let him out. I have a fenced seven acre property. I have about an acre pond, which he loves to run around and play in. So every couple hours, I'm going to let him out and I'm going to let him do his thing. I'm going to let him run around. It could be 10 minutes, it could be 30 minutes. And I'm going to do that throughout the day as I see fit. Whoops, lost my place. A lot of questions. Thanks for joining me, y'all. We back, baby. We back. Does your two Belgian Malinois interact with each other? No, sir. No, sir. These are working dogs. This ain't no Caesar Milan. They don't. Currently working on building my boy's tug work. Grip, targeting, bringing the toy back, out, layering in distractions, plus negative reinforcement, etc. with the intentions of bite work in the future. Nice, Nick. That sounds like 
um, a heck of a regiment. It sounds like all those components that you're focusing on are the right ones to put time into, but make sure, Nick, everything that you're working on is isolated. So you said you're building your boys tug work, grip, targeting, bringing it back, distractions, negative reinforcement. That's all good. Have one five to 10 minute session where you work on grip only. Put the dog away. Two hours later, bring the dog back out. Do one five to 10 minute session where you only work on targeting. Put the dog away, bring the dog back out. One session where you only work on out. Put the dog away, et cetera, et cetera. Then when all of those components you feel are very sound, then you can start putting the whole thing together. What are some things that need to be mastered before the dog is ready for bite work? Bite work, I'm assuming you mean with a second person, another helper, another decoy, not with you. Um, what are some things that need to be mastered before the dog's ready for bite work? Well, the dog has to want to bite, obviously. But Nick, here's the thing. Your dog needs to be independent, period. Your dog needs to be independent. That's what any dog needs to potentially succeed in bite work. Look, the dog has to want to bite. Okay, if you have a Malinois, that probably comes built in. The dog needs to be independent because you're going to do bite work with a, with a helper a fraction of the time. You're going to be doing engagement and obedience work a lot more than bite work. I do bite work once a week, but I probably train five times a week. So the time that my dog spends training with me far outweighs the time he spends training with the decoy. So my dog has to be very independent because if he's not, he's going to revert to what he's doing most of the time, which is engaging with me. And then I have a dog who's biting and trying to look back at me, a dog that outs in a guard and tries to look back at me. And that's no good, Nick. So you need your dog to be very independent. So he has no problem going and working with a stranger while you're behind him and he doesn't have a care in the world about you. The hardest thing training a dog for bite work is a dog that is, has some, some mommy or daddy issues that's just all over the handler. It's no good. Love your videos. However, you show how well they are trained. Can you show more in depth how to skill? Well, luckily for you, I have already thought of that. That's what my Patreon is for. Patreon.com slash Andy Kruger. Yes, it costs money. It is not the cheapest thing you will ever find in your life about dog training, but it sure as heck isn't even close to the most expensive. My Patreon is where I post weekly, unedited, full-length, mistakes and all training sessions with all kinds of dogs. That's where you're going to get the in-depth stuff. When do you like to introduce markers on a green dog? Day one. That's the very first thing I do with a green, a green dog, a.k.a. a brand new dog. Markers from day one. Hold the food. The dog wants the food. Good, 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 good. Yes, 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 yes. Day one for markers. As long as they want what you have, day one. Have high engagement and toy drive but he's a typewriter. Less with back ties and working on full steady grip. Should we only play tug on the back tie or keep reward? Only tug on the back tie. If your dog's a typewriter, your dog's gonna play tug on that back tie for six months, period. Never off of it. Our male Diesel is training for French Ring. And we've been a NARA member for a year now. That's what's up, Bradley. Your videos have been very helpful in our journey. Sweet, man. That's good to hear. Keep it up. What type of muzzle do you recommend? I like a brand called Jafco. J-A-F-C-O. You can get those on Amazon. You can get those on Learberg. It's a hard plastic. I like those the best. 
What's the first step to avoid continuing to have typewriter on tugs? Back tie all day. I mean, you need a back tie, but you also need to know what you're doing because a dog can still typewriter to some extent on the back tie. So you have to have the feel. You have to have the finesse, but back tie for sure. It was really hard for me to keep my puppy in the crate when not working him. It sure does make a difference. He's 10 months old and worries only about me. So guys, another thing that the crate does is it creates independence. The biggest issue I see with pet and somewhat working dogs, they're nowhere near as independent as they should be. Having a healthy crate routine is what creates an independent, confident dog. If they're with you all the time, they need you. They're only happy with you. They're anxious without you. You know why? Because most of the time they're with you. So whatever they're doing most of the time is what they gravitate towards. So if they're with you most of the time, that's what they're going to revert to when they're stressed. Crate creates independence. And that's the number one thing I need out of my dog. Question about reactivity. I have an answer. One-year-old Dutch Shepherd was neutral towards other dogs until he was attacked by an off-leash dog during a walk. Now he's reactive on walks. Totally confirms my point that all it takes is one single time to drastically affect your dog negatively. Now this is easy to say, but you can't have your dog in an environment where a random dog could potentially run up. That's in a perfect world. I know that most people, that's just not possible. Not everyone lives on a secure compound in the middle of nowhere. So I know that that's not realistically possible. Um, whoever the other dog was, the owner is horrible. They should never, ever own a dog. Anyone that can't contain their dogs on their property or on a leash probably shouldn't own a dog in the first place. That's extremely unfortunate. All you can do moving forward is keep working your engagement and try your hardest to never put your dog in a situation where that's going to happen. All it takes is once. How do you train your dog not to focus on other dogs? Oh, lost my place. Hold on. How do I train my dog not to focus on other dogs? Well, from day one, other dogs don't reward him. Other dogs don't reinforce anything. Now, if you want to be Mr. Caesar Milan and let your dog go up and meet dogs, all it takes is once, though. Remember, all it takes is once. If you want to do that, you're not going to be able to get that focus the same way I'm going to. So all I did was train my engagement. Other dogs, other people, they never provided reinforcement. So my dog doesn't gravitate towards them. Should 100% be at 100K? Yeah, 100,000 subscribers. We coming, baby. Not this year, but I think next year we'll get there. Thank you, Chris. Before when I would take my nine-month-old Malinois to the vet, he would lunge on the leash. But now he just sits when I tell him to, but he cries while staring at the other dogs in the waiting room, LOL. Yep, anxiety. Anxiety. I don't call it crying because that's kind of anthropomorphizing the dog. It's kind of a, it's a human cry. Oh, oh, he's crying. Kind of treats the dog like a person. I don't use crying. I use leaking. Your dog is leaking at the... Ah, 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 ah. 
<laughs> that is anxiety and stress oozing out of the dog. No good. Finally made it. I've been having fun, aka training a lot. Thanks for the videos. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing Freddie in May. Me and Freddie will compete for the first time in the spring. It should go fine. Just kidding. Brevet's easy. I actually have a park across the street. Do you think letting him run around the field off leash with my supervision is okay? Yeah, that could be okay. Um, I didn't own the dog Oasis forever. I've been in dogs much longer than I've been at this property. So I definitely always had the local park scouted out. I would know the times of day and the days of the week that I could go there and it would be dead. Um, early in the morning usually is best. Uh, on a weekday at like, you know, 10, 11 o'clock, two or three, you know, no one's on their lunch break, no one's home from work. So you definitely could, look, you always run the risk of some random dog running up, but if you're pretty good and you keep the time moderate and you are really like a hawk making sure the field across the street should be fine. My dog has solid drive, working dog. He loves to work, but he's well behaved with other male dogs. Nice, nice. 100% right and the proof is how your dog acts. I enjoy my dog so much more because I choose to listen and learn from you, Patreon merch. Thank you. That's what I like to hear, guys. This is why I do it because I Really, really like I'm passionate about dog training. It's really my whole life. And I like sharing that with other people. So hearing that the videos help makes me want to keep on trucking. I'd keep going anyway, but extra motivation. Thank you. Any quick words on fear reactivity? Constantly working on the heel position. Fear reactivity. A couple quick words. You can't correct fear. It will make it worse. If your dog is fearful and you start putting pressure on them and telling them no and adding aversives, unfortunately, they're not going to snap into a happy mindset after that. The correction is going to make them worse. So for fear reactivity... You have to have a dog whose food drive or toy drive is bananas. Like you almost lose your hand when you're hand feeding them. They're insane all times a million for food. If I don't have that, we going on a diet, baby. We going on that diet. If I have a fear dog, I am going to get that dog. So motivated by food and a toy, everything else becomes white noise. If the dog isn't capable of achieving that level of drive, you're in a bit of a pickle. I know your training method is the same for pet and working dogs, sort of. At what time do you transition? Whenever the dog is ready, transition. What time do you tra... Here's the thing, Chris, you could say the method is the same for pet dogs and working dogs. Here's the thing with pet dogs though, I got three weeks. I got three weeks, that's all I got. It's a board and train. If I really wanted to, I'd keep the dog four, but I found after that three week mark, we gotta get them home, we gotta get them working with the owner. I could keep them a year. The, do the owner still has to learn it at some point. So the difference is I have a hard deadline for a pet. It's not ideal because if I buy my own pet dog and I have the dog's whole life to train, I'll take things as slow as I need. But I can't do that for a client. 
I have to make it happen in three weeks. So that timeline definitely determines when and how fast I'm going to push a dog. My 10 month old Rottweiler is reactive on the leash and when sees another dog, not in a bad way, but strong enough to pull, what can I do? I understand you mean they're not aggressive. They're not trying to attack the other dog and kill them, but it's definitely not a good thing. It is kind of in a bad way. What do you do with a reactive dog? What do you guys think? Who can answer it for me? Engagement, 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 engagement. If your dog doesn't care about you, your dog's telling you that a strange animal that they will never meet or come into contact with is more valuable than you. You. You who bought the dog. There's a couple thousand. Takes the dog to the vet regularly to make sure that the dog's healthy. That's several hundred. You bought all the dog's equipment. Several hundred. You buy the dog's food. Thousands over a lifetime. You probably spend a lot of time thinking about the dog. The dog probably occupies a space in your mind. You probably coordinate your schedule, your vacations, your work around the dog and what the dog needs. You put all of that in the dog. You pay Andy 25 bucks a month on Patreon. You pay 300 bucks a year. Maybe you pay 900 bucks a year for training. Maybe you send the dog for a board and train. You spend four grand. You do all that for the dog. And all your dog has to say to you is that strange animal I don't know in the distance is more valuable than you. What? No good. You must be the most valuable thing to your dog at all times. And right now your dog's saying you're not. Will Jasper and Freddy fight together if you let them together? Are they antisocial with other dogs? No, Fred's pretty good with other dogs. Jasper's not, though. Five-minute challenges are my favorite. Thank you. Second session is my dog's automatically looking for eye contact. That's what you want. Working on duration now. He's doing fantastic. Train your dog, people. Booyah. If you do things right, guys, it doesn't take months and years to do. You do a couple really quality sessions that connects with the dog, you should be seeing progress. We love the Patreon. Thanks, Stefan. Stefan's killing it. There's a dedicated dog owner right there. I know he's training. Ain't no doubt about that one. Hey, everyone, Andy, you need to take your prices on Patreon. <laughs> you need to raise your prices on Patreon because it rocks. Thank you. I paid her to say that. Can't stay but want to get in a question and catch it on the replay. Thanks, Ashley. How do you make a dog? This isn't Ashley's question, but how do you make a dog like water if the dog is scared of it? Give the dog time. Don't rush the dog. Let the dog be there while other dogs are swimming. And just give him time. Could take a week, a month, a year. Can't force him in the water, though, that's for sure. Give it time. Here's Ashley's question. Andy, how do you teach food refusal? I want Lincoln to know eating anything off the ground is off limits. There's actually a little snippet of this in one of my Patreon videos. You teach the food refusal by first just teaching the dog to ignore different objects that you throw. An empty water bottle, a shoe, anything. Put the dog in a downstay, toss it a couple feet in front of the dog. Dog stays, reward him. Repeat, 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 repeat. When the dog's bulletproof and you can throw objects by him and they don't move, then you grab a piece of food. Start 10 feet away, reward five feet away, reward, one foot away, reward, and you build it from there. But I am going to put together something a little more comprehensive, probably for Patreon, um, about my food refusal training, because the food refusal, it's a crucial exercise in the French ring sport. 
but it also has a very practical application. You're taking your dog for a walk down the street. There's a chicken bone on the ground. We obviously don't want the dog to eat that. In French ring, if they throw a piece of food and your dog eats it, <clears throat> zero. So I, I'm planning on making a video about that. Uh-oh, lost my place. Here we go. One more. This is from Ashley. I'd like to teach him to bark in the method that you do with Freddie on Patreon. Can I potentially create a disaster for my dog by doing that? Currently, he rarely barks. No, Ashley, with the regiment I know your dog's on and the training that I know he has, you're going to be just fine with that. Do the exact same method to a T that's on the Patreon video. I'm currently in the process of transferring my dog to the decoy in the blind, so I'm going to get some video of that soon. I think you guys will like it. How do you avoid separation anxiety on dogs? I leave them alone. I'm not obsessed with them. I'm not constantly around them, constantly touching them, constantly looking at them, constantly letting them off leash free roam around the house. I don't do any of that. So my dog doesn't have any separation anxiety. How much do you think about the dog? If you find yourself thinking about the dog most of the time, most days, that dog's going to have separation anxiety because you're obsessed with the dog. You can't just put the dog away and just forget about it for a little while. You're obsessed with the dog, so the dog's obsessed with you. So no free roaming, no patting, no little oh, yeah, puppy. A young dog in training? Absolutely not. You have an older dog who's seasoned, nice training, maybe some titles. Different set of rules. You don't have the same rules for a 10-year-old as you do for a 20-year-old. Well, the 20-year-old should hopefully be out of the house, but you know what I mean. Patreon has helped me greatly. If you can afford only the first level, go for it. You will enjoy the level up. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I realize the Patreon, it's not like five bucks a month. It's 25 a month. It's 50 a month or it's 75 a month. And I realize just off the bat, that sounds like a lot. Oh my God. That's like four times what Netflix is. If you're paying $75 a month to train your dog, I want you to put this into perspective. It's $900 a year. Sending your dog for a three-week board and train with me is $3,500 for three weeks. There's trainers in the area that charge more than that. And they suck. They charge more than that. That's honestly, it's not on the low end, but it's pretty medium for board and train rates. I've seen crazy prices. Um, let's say you want to come do a one-on-one -on -one lesson with me. It's a couple hundred bucks for an hour. I heard one of my clients say before they found me, they did a phone consultation with a popular YouTube trainer. Just kidding. And it was $250 for a half hour on the phone. And the guy was like, yep, what's the problem? Yep, okay, nope, dude. Do, do. Like, couldn't have given... It's like he just had like 50 calls to rifle through and just wanted to rifle through that. Zero passion. Zero. $250 for a half hour of that. For the $25 tier... That's almost a year of weekly videos, sometimes two videos a week. How many weeks in a year? You can do the math. So dog training can sound expensive, a little sticker shock at first, but I'm telling you what, guy. I mean, you want to go to a great website like Learberg and buy some of their training videos? I mean, you're going to spend a couple hundred bucks right there on just a couple of videos. Just to put it in perspective, you know, not trying to just sell myself, but a little bit. Patreon crew, thanks for the help, Andy. Hey, buddy, could you please explain how to increase the duration of healing for competition? It's all about fading the lure. 
So you have the food in the dog's face, you pull the food away, you bring the dog back. Larry Berg is $50 a video, not a hundred. But I think I meant like if you buy a couple videos, you're gonna spend a hundred or two bucks, couple videos. Um, it's all about fading the lore for that duration and heal. So one second, pay. Two seconds, pay. One second, pay. Three seconds, pay. One second, pay. Four seconds, pay. You get the idea. That's how I do it. Does your Patreon level two explain how to build better hit and speed to decoy? Well, I'd be a decoy for my own dog. I mean, the level two, it's geared towards decoys. It'll definitely help you tremendously. A cool part of being a patron, too, is if you want a certain kind of video that I don't have, you can message me on Patreon and say, hey, can you do a video about how to create a hard strike? And it might not be the next day, but in somewhat of a timely fashion, I try to do that. But the level two would help you for sure. Can you give advice on introducing distractions, noises, and stuff to build our mouth's focus to proof the command? Anytime you introduce a distraction, you want the food in the dog's face and the dog eating. That's it. You want to start obedience around another dog? Bring out the other dog, shove food in your dog's face and feed him. Feed, feed, feed. If your dog can't just eat out of your hand as the dog's running around, don't move on. If you want to create loud noises, shove the food in the face. The dog's eating, 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 bang, loud noise, eating, 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 bang, loud noise, eating, 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 bang, loud noise. And that's how you're going to gauge how quick you can take the food away. Because if they're getting distracted and pulling away from the food when you're feeding them, they're not ready yet. They need more time. Question, I've had my mal for three months. How do you know when your one-year-old Mal is ready for advanced obedience? I have trained her and she obeys all the basics on leash. Well, if you've trained her and she obeys all the basics on leash, kick it up a notch. Right now, you want to push the dog. You want to be meticulous. You want to take your time. You want to go all through all the steps correctly, but you want to push the dog too. We want progress. A great trainer knows how to build step by step and how to push. Andy, I need a new five minute challenge, one with a lot of running. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you for the suggestion. Thanks for the answer on bite work. Independence is something we're building as well besides the crate regimen. Is there anything else I need to build solid independence? Nick, if you have a fenced in yard, you go put that dog in the yard. You close the gate, you go inside. If Doggy is whining by the gate the whole time and jumping and not really running around doing his thing, you need to do that every day for three months with him. That's a good way to gauge the independence. Can too much obedience damage independence? Too much independence damage obedience? Yep. Yes, it can. Too much obedience can definitely damage independence. You spend hours, eye contact, eye contact, eye contact. You install all that, but your dog needs to be able to flip too. Genetics are a, a, a good part of it. But yeah, you're right about that. It can, it's always training. It's always a balance. Every day we balance a little more. It's the way it goes. What kind of bite work, if any, do you do while puppy is teething? I don't do any bite work when the puppy's teething. None whatsoever. Just because the puppy can doesn't mean the puppy should. So my dog will still bite teething, but I don't do it. Hey, Andy. Slight tear in dog's ACL. Will I have to worry on training over lifetime? Vet says it's not ruptured. No, but I would be really cautious with the, the rest time. Like I'd probably, unfortunately, I would probably crate rest that dog for like three months. That's what I would do. That would suck. Sorry. I've been through bad injuries with my dogs. I feel your pain. 
Hey, Andy, during walks, I never let my male meet another dog or let strangers pet him. But in my little town, almost everyone lets his dog off leash. Any advice on how to deal with the situations? Move. Move. <laughs> I would get the hell out of there. You're in a lose-lose, man. I'm sorry to say. It's a lose-lose. If most people let their dogs out running around, I ain't taking my dog anywhere near that place. They make, you know, a good client of mine, Ashley, she gave me this like aerosol can that like sprays air though. Like, psh, you know, it's almost like mace, but air. And apparently if you spray that in a dog's face, I haven't tried it, but if you spray that in a dog's face, it like kind of gives you a minute to maybe do that. But Man, that situation, it's just like you're kind of screwed. That that sucks. We make a video about bark and hold. There are bark and hold videos on my Patreon, yes. Will I put one on YouTube? I don't know. How do you use the toy in training if they respond better to that? Do you throw it or give it to them? Do you then take it away for the next training? Christine, it all depends on the dog. It all depends what you're trying to do. What are you trying to build in particular? Are you trying to build possession? You let that dog win. You let that dog take it. All depends what you're trying to work on. But if your dog does better with a toy for food, I'd put him on a diet. Do you like to build all the obedience exercises before working on other parts of the sport like jumps, retrieve, and so on? Or do you like to build all together? I like to build all together. I like to work on separate components one piece at a time, but I like to do everything together from day one so the dog knows. Sometimes we come out and I jump, I heal, I retrieve, I send out, I position, I face attack, I object guard. Um, so I, I do a little bit of both. I put everything together from day one, but isolate specific little things like the hold or positions that I can just do five, 10 minutes of at a time. So if free roaming is not good for a dog, what is our dog supposed to do the rest of the 22 or 23 hours? How about interact with you? How about developing a daily regimen that satisfies the dog's physical and mental needs. Training, exercise, rest. You guys are thinking because, oh, an hour of training and then no free roam, the dog's in the crate for 22, 23 hours. No, that's not the case. When the dog's out of the crate, the dog's interacting with you. When the dog's out of the crate, you are giving the dog your undivided attention. You're not sitting there watching TV. You're not playing on your phone. You bring that dog out and you know what you're going to do with that dog. And you're going to make that dog feel really, really, really good. And you're specific about your approach. That's how you own and train a dog. That's how you satisfy a dog's needs. If you interpret that as, well, I'll just do an hour of training and then stick him in a crate for the rest of the time. You've misunderstood that. What's the dog supposed to do? The dog's supposed to interact with you. And when they're not interacting with you, you should be building independence, either outside or in the crate. Looking forward to watching a food refusal on Patreon in the future. Thank you. Yeah, I got to get cracking on that. I have two male Norwegian Buhans. Sorry. I'm blind. And if I go on a play date with another dog, let's say a female, one of my dogs will guard the female and get mad at the other male and act like it's his female.
Here's one from Christine. Going to level two Patreon is for those that don't want to do French ring. Going to level two Patreon is for those that don't want to do French ring. I'm trying to make sure I understand that question. Christine, if you have no interest in French ring or decoy work, tier two is not for you. Stick to tier one. Tier two, it's if you want to be a decoy, if your dog works on a decoy and you want to help train your decoy and progress, it's really all about decoying, French ring, bite work. So, I mean, there is some stuff on there that's like just catching a dog on a sleeve, but it is mostly French ring. Board and train's gone up in the last two years. Same with everything, right? We did a board and train for two grand per dog for a month. This is a trainer that has gone to Worlds and placed top five. So strong IGP background. That's cool. Any advice for me about getting a female eight-week-old puppy to raise with my male who's three hopefully to mate once she's old enough um now no offense but i'm totally against that i'm totally against that kind of breeding i would never recommend doing that i would strongly advise anyone against that it is a free country. You can do whatever you want. You can breed them if you want, but that definitely makes me want to melt into my chair again. No, please no breeding. Please, please no breeding. Hey, Andy, do you recommend an e-collar for recall as well for my Malinois? Um, Tony, I would focus on training a very, very strong, reliable recall before you even entertain an e-collar. What's up, Andy? Glad you're back. Patreon crew, let's go! What's the hardest exercise to train in French ring? Object guard. That's the hardest, object guard. Do you mix food and ball on a rope during the same training sessions? Yeah, you definitely could, definitely. My two-year-old male reacts, barks, When someone knocks on the door, or if a friend comes over, he's crated in another room and has very structured training through the day. Any advice to help his reactivity? If the dog's on an e-collar, understands the e-collar. I really don't advocate for e-collars much. Definitely not for stuff outside of the crate, but if the lifestyle's perfect, if all your interactions are perfect, sometimes just a little, little stimulation on the e-collar can curb that. I'm not saying you should do that. I'm saying that could be done. Andy, I'm currently training a golden retriever who killed a little poodle. Yowza. Yowza. Bad Goldie. Bad Goldie. I put him on a special diet, hand feeding. He's thinner now, but still not that food motivated. Yeah, then I would try like a chicken or something high value, freeze dried. Thanks for all the lives, videos, and advice. Thanks, Ryan. I'm using more negative reinforcement now that positive. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, that's okay, Lewis. You really can't go wrong with negative reinforcement. Punishment is where you could damage the dog. So negative reinforcement's fine. Especially if a dog killed another dog? What the hell? Yeah. Whew. Hey, Andy, we have a seven-month-old male Dutch Shepherd. Our most concern about our pup is when my wife takes him on walks while I'm next to her is when my wife takes him on walks while I'm next to her, he starts to get anxiety and wants only dad. Yeah, that's not good. I'll tell you why the dog does that. It's every interaction and experience that they've had leading up until this point and their lifestyle outside training. So I could guarantee you that that seven-month-old Dutch Shepherd 
has had a lot of off-leash free roam in the house. You've put a lot of attention on him. You've pet him. You look at him a lot. He looks at you a lot. He's obsessed with you. He's so obsessed with you, he can't even be a few feet away from you without having a panic attack. Massively unhealthy. A Dutch Shepherd is not meant to be a pet dog. They're not designed to live in a house and just hang out with the owners. They're meant to work and they're meant to rest. That's what they're supposed to do. Dutch Shepherds are engineered to be in the back of police cars. They're built to incapacitate grown men that are fighting them. So if you're just loving on the dog, making an Instagram page for them, kissing them, petting them all the time, you're going to destroy the dog's independence, unfortunately. He's a board and trained. Yeah, Lewis, that golden, negative reinforcement, negative reinforcement, negative all day long. You don't need that thing to be a sport dog. You don't need that thing to be drivey. You don't need it to be in prey. You need that thing to comply. Now, I'm not saying break his spirit. I'm not saying punish him, but that dog absolutely just needs to comply. Didn't have enough space to type in a question, but how would you assess the situation with the two Norwegian dogs? Seems like jealousy and just being a bully. Yeah, I don't even, I wouldn't, I, I don't even know about any of that. I don't even, that's not dog training to me. That's just, I mean, we stuck a bunch of dogs that are being treated like pet dogs, but they're not pet dogs in a space and just let them have at it. I don't have the foggiest idea about that. I'm, I'm a dog trainer. That's all I do. I'm just a trainer. When it comes to like, we put a collection of dogs together and then this happened. What should we do? I don't know about any of that stuff. That's, that definitely has nothing to do with dog training. How to build perfect engagement. Yep, check my YouTube videos. Tons on that. <laughs> the poodle had it coming. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little fella. Hey, Andy, I joined your Patreon account. Let's go. Thank you very much. Can an 11-year-old handle a Belgian Malinois with the right training for both dog and handler? An 11-year-old could handle it, yeah. The future's now. Okay, y'all, this was a fun one. Thanks for everyone that jumped on. Thank you for watching. Patreon.com slash Andy Kruger, blah, 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 blah. But if you guys really want to ride with me, you really want to help me, every Monday I drop a video, check the video out. That's all I'm asking. All right, y'all. Till next time, happy training.